So you're interested in finding out how to serve a watertight Section 21 notice to ensure you tick all of the boxes and cover yourself in case your tenant doesn't vacate your property and you're forced to go to court. If that's the case, then you're in the right place. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things buy-to-let property related, make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. Firstly, let's be really clear on what a Section 21 notice actually is. A Section 21 notice is often known as a no-fault eviction. Essentially, when a landlord serves a tenant with a Section 21 notice, they don't have to provide any reasoning for the eviction. In this video, we'll focus on the Section 21 notices. But before we get started, I'll just highlight the difference between a Section 21 and a Section 8 notice, just to eliminate any confusion. So the Section 21 doesn't require the landlord to provide their tenant with a reason for the eviction. In comparison, a Section 8 notice requires the landlord to give at least one of the 17 grounds for eviction, and that's the difference. Now, it's really common and very easy for landlords and letting agents to incorrectly serve notices. And if you find yourself with a tenant who refuses to move out and you haven't followed the correct procedure, no court will assist in helping you regain possession of your property. And you'll find yourself in a really stressful and challenging position. It's worth noting that the courts are not on your side. They will not give you the benefit of the doubt. And unless your case is perfectly accurate and fully watertight, then you'll have no chance of successfully evicting your tenants. Having gone through this process a few times now over myself, the best advice that I can give is to get fully educated and clear on the exact procedure before taking any action. A day lost researching and planning is far better than three months as you've served your notice incorrectly. Luckily for you, in this video, I'll tell you all you need to know to cross the T's, dot the I's and tick all of the boxes required to get the law on your side. For a Section 21 notice to be valid, it must fulfil several requirements. And believe me when I say that these are very strict requirements. If a court spots any issues, they will not hear your case and you'll be back to square one. As you work through this video, if you've already served your notice and realise that you've not ticked any of the boxes, my advice is to actually action the step and then serve your notice again. There is nothing worse than finally getting to court and then having the case thrown out for inaccuracies. Firstly, a Section 21 notice must give a tenant a minimum of two months notice, and that's from the date that it's actually served. From my personal previous experience, this isn't two months to the day, but a clear two months. My best advice is to give two months and a day or two just to ensure that you don't fall short. If your notice is two months, including the day of being served, you'll need to reissue it before any court will hear your case. You will then need to provide written proof of service stating who served the notice and when. If the notice was served by a letting agent, it's advisable to have this information in an official letter on company-headed paper. Next up, the tenancy agreement must be an assured shorthold tenancy agreement, so an AST. You'll need to provide a copy of the current AST and any previous ones for the same tenant. At this stage, it's worth checking all of the information on the AST is correct. Common mistakes are incorrect landlord addresses or personal names rather than company names that own the property. If you have another agreement in place, then you'll need to do some further research into what steps that you need to take to be able to action your eviction. Then we have deposit protection proof. All landlords and agents are required to protect a tenant's deposit in a government authorised scheme. A tenant must be given the prescribed information and deposit certificate, which are both issued when the deposit is submitted within 30 days after paying it. You'll need to be able to produce the deposit certificate and prove that you have given your tenant the prescribed information. My best advice is to always email over the information so you have electronic evidence if needed. Your case will also not be heard in a court if the tenant has recently made a formal complaint about the condition of the property. To continue with the eviction, you will need proof that the issue has been sorted and fixed and the complaint resolved before you serve notice. Or if an improvement notice or notice of emergency remedial action has been made by the local authority within the last six months. 
You will also need to ensure that the fixed term of the tenancy agreement has ended. A landlord can serve a Section 21 notice at any time during the tenancy, but the notice date can't end before the end of the fixed term. A tenant must have received a copy of the gas safety certificate and you'll need proof of them receiving it. You will also need to show that a gas safety certificate has been issued to the tenant annually following previous inspections. You must be able to produce a valid electrical installation condition report or an EICR and the energy performance certificate or EPC for the property and proof of the date that it was issued and a copy of the government's How to Rent Guide. Again, how is this given to the tenants, by who and when, will need to be submitted. Then we have licences. Does the property require a HMO licence, or does the area have selective licensing? If so, you'll need to provide a copy of the licence. All of the mentioned will need to be included in the proof of evidence file that the court will request before your case will be heard. Again, I suggest with all new tenancies, you email copies of the mentioned certificates to ensure that you always have proof if needed when it comes to evicting a tenant. If you follow what we have just been through, then you should be in a great position to regain possession of your property. However, there are some very common mistakes that landlords and agents make when attempting to evict tenants. And although these might seem like really small and insignificant little issues, a court will spot the issue and refuse to hear the case until everything is in perfect order. Let's take a look at some of the most common mistakes. If you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over £2 million. Simply go to the description below, Click on the link and I'll send you out a free copy. Spelling mistakes on any of the documentation is a surefire way to go back to square one. Check names, addresses and any information that has been added by you or your agent. Not using the prescribed forms. There are set forms that the court will accept and if other forms are used they'll not agree to proceed. Incorrectly completed forms. The courts seem to really enjoy spotting incorrectly completed forms, words being crossed out or unreadable writing. If your form isn't completed neatly and perfectly, then it will be sent back for review. Miscalculation of the notice period. I've experienced this one myself. My agent served notice to the day and I was informed I would have to reissue the notice as I hadn't given a clear two months. Trust me, the last thing that you want to do is wait two months to be told that you need to give another two months as you were a day short on your notice. Not securing the tenant's deposit. This is an easy one to get right, but if you've not done your research and have decided to let the property yourself without an agent's assistance, it can be missed. Not protecting within 30 days is more common than not protecting at all. Serving a notice as a response to a tenant raising a legitimate repair concern. As mentioned before, if you receive an official complaint about the condition of the property, you must solve the issue and have the proof before you can serve notice. Charging prohibited fees. If your tenant can prove that you have or are charging prohibited fees, then the case can and will be thrown out of court. And issue in possession proceedings prematurely. If you have taken steps to remove your tenant from the property before the case has been heard by the court and a possession order granted, then your Section 21 notice won't stand. If you wanted to check out where my experience came from with evictions, make sure that you give this video series a watch where I had a non-paying tenant who trashed my property, refused to leave and made me take them to court to get my property back. When serving a Section 21 notice, a landlord must ensure that they have proof that they have served the notice. This proof is important in a situation where the eviction is contested by the tenant. Some advised ways of serving notice include personal delivery. Personal delivery means physically handing the notice to the tenant. In this instance, notice is served on the day it was delivered. This route is often preferred for landlords who seek a speedy eviction. My advice is to take a photo of the notice next to the house number of the property and then another one when the notice is handed to the tenant, just like the Amazon delivery drivers do. 
Left at the address, a landlord could do this by producing an envelope address to the tenant and leaving it at the property. For example, by posting it through the letterbox. In this case, the deemed date of the service will be three days after the delivery date. Again, photographic evidence of the notice being posted is a sure way to tick the proof box. Recorded delivery. If the tenant accepts the delivery, the notice is served on the date it's delivered and signed for. However, if the envelope is returned undelivered, the landlord won't have served the notice. The proof of postage acts as the proof required for the courts. Process server. A process server is a professional service that serves legal notices. A process server will produce a proof of service that is fit for the court. This is basically paying somebody to hand deliver the notice to the tenant for you. First class post. A landlord can also serve notice by postal delivery. Because the first class post takes two working days to arrive, the notice period will be two days. Again, proof of postage is the evidence required for the courts. Email. A landlord can serve notice via email. The notice is considered serve on the day of delivery, as long as the landlord sent the email before 4.30pm on a working day. If the landlord sends the notice after 4.30pm or on a weekend, the notice will be considered served on the next working day. The email itself is the proof required for the courts. So there you have it. Now you can go ahead and serve that section 21 notice with confidence. Let me know in the comments below how you get on. If you've got any value from this video at all, please do give me a thumbs up. It just helps others find the video like you have done today. Don't forget to pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, by simply going to the description below and clicking on the link. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this one and head over to my website, www.new2property.co.uk to see the products and services that I have on offer to help you on your property journey. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.